Hello and good evening to you. Welcome to News 360 and it's live. My news up here at Adesawa in Kanda. My name is Alfred Akonsi. And I'm Natalie Ford. to look at the top stories this evening. News 360 headlines is brought to you by... Tema Metropolitan Authority performs woefully in sanitation in 2017 National District League table, but ranked highest in development. Also, the Bonavo region likely to be divided into three instead of two if petitioners are able to make a strong case. Also in the news this evening, business owners and online shops globally to reduce prices of goods tomorrow to what is now named Black Friday. Tonight we find out what exactly Black Friday is. And also on the International Front, International Monetary Fund warns Zimbabwe must act quickly to dig its economy out of a hole and access international financial aid. We've got the details of these stories for you here on News 360, including the latest from the world of sports and entertainment. Remember, we're streaming live on 3news.com as well as TV3 Ghana on Facebook. To our first story, this evening, the Tema Metropolitan Assembly is the highest ranked district in this year's Ghana's District League table. The Assembly returned to the top spot for the second time after being deposed of its foremost slot by La Nkwantanang Medina. In 2016, however, Krachi East in the Volta region dropped from 206th in the 2016 ranking to the last position of 216 in this year's ranking. As the ranking means, Tema has Ghana's highest level of development, scoring the highest ever mark of 80 out of 100. As the ranking was based on six key sector indicators, education, health, water, sanitation, governance and security. Although Tema Metropolitan came up first, improving on indicators like health as well as water, it was revealed that they performed poorly in the area of sanitation. This is a reflection of the state of sanitation across the country. And many districts have made no progress in this area. There's a lot of efforts underway and what we have seen this year is that one region in the country which is traditionally th thought of as very poor, the Upper West region, that is now coming out on top. So when you average all of the district scores across the country, Upper West Region now has the highest regional score out of the entire country. And that's because of sanitation. They are making real progress and actually certifying large numbers of their communities of being free of open defecation. The ranking is a snapshot of development in the year 2016. CDD Ghana's Deputy Director Franklin Udrow says access to data has been a challenge in gathering information for the ranking. This gives a fair idea of how the country is warming up towards meeting the sustainable development goal by the year 2020. The Deputy Minister for Local Government and Rural Development, Nana E.J. Boatin, said the ranking should be able to guide the district to perform better in subsequent years. Might even be bigger than that because they may even have the resources, but how to apply the resources would also be another factor that we need to consider. So it is also important that we look at the efficiency with which the resources are applied. The table aims to improve transparency and accountability in national development by making progress public. Now we should bear in mind that this 2017 districts league table is more of a reflection of the performance of the districts actually in 2016, while say the 2018 league table will be the performance of the districts in the previous year 2017. And as you heard earlier, the CDD has complained of issues and challenges when it comes to having the data to collate this material needed to come out with the league table. I'm going to run us by the top five districts and the lowest five districts. Now, the ranking for Tema Metropolitan Assembly or the Tema Metropolis in the greater Accra region was first. As we saw, Tema, Metropo 
metropolis ranked number one, while the La in Quantanamo Medina municipal area in the greater Accra region ranked number two. Now, the Tama metropolitan area actually, pre the previous ranking was ranked second. So that's a step up for it, went up by one point. But we still know that issues of Sanitation problems are still faced in that part, in that particular district. And the Lion Quantanamo Medina Municipal Area in the Greater Accra Region is ranked second in the 2016 results. However, they dropped by one point because previously it was ranked first place. The Chima in Yapeja in the Ashanti Region ranked third. This particular district, in fact, went up by 34. Four points. That's quite a staggering one for this district because in the previous year it was ranked at 37th. And the upper Dentra East Municipal area in the central region was ranked fourth, however, went up by five points. Previously it was ranked ninth. So that's pretty significant in a, to, to a large extent. And the Iwutu Senior district in the central region was ranked fifth. This dropped by just one point as in the previous year it was ranked fourth. So this gives us a an idea of the ranking of these particular districts. The Agona East District, this is a look at the bottom five districts. The Agona East District was ranked 212th this year, and it's in the central region, and it in fact went down by five points because previously it was ranked, it went down by 43 points because previously it was ranked 160. 169th and the East Gonja district ranked 213th that's in the northern region it went up by five points Gomwa West 214 points ranking for this particular league table of 2017 and it dropped by two points just two points previously ranked at 212 while Gushegu in the northern region ranked 215th dropped by five points and Karachi East in the Volta region 216th this particular district actually dropped by 10 points as in the last league table it, it was ranked at 206th so that gives us a, a little idea Alfred of how they are performing but we still know that sanitation remains a problem in some of these districts. Absolutely sanitation is one of the major problems that this league district yes. league table uh, reveals Natalie and we're going to go on to Skype now and uh, engage Dr. Franklin Odro. He is a deputy director at uh, the Center for Democratic Development, CDD. They partnered UNICEF to put this league table, that's a district league table, together. Doctor, good evening to you. Thank you for your time this evening. I want to find out from you, Tema scored 80 out of 100, the highest score ever. What was the situation with sanitation in the Tema metropolis that you identified? Thank you for the opportunity. Um, well, straight to your point, Tema. Tema actually, for the past four years, uh, including this year, had zero percent when it comes to uh, sanitation. Um, and, and sanitation here, we mean by uh, opening defecation free. Uh, so communities within Tema metropolis that were certified as ODF were actually there. Uh, as the, the data showed, and, and that's what we recorded and then used uh, for the assessment. Now, so what does this mean? That I mean, sanitation, even though it was a problem in Tema, it didn't affect the ranking in any way? But what, it, what it means is that, first of all, let me uh, take you back a little bit to the, to the, to the ranking. Um, so there are six sectors that we look at, and each of the six sectors, there are one or two indicators. Uh, so if we take uh, education, we look at BEC pass rates. If you take health, we look at um, skills uh, delivery at best. Uh, this year, we added uh, another indicator to the health, um, uh, health sector. Uh, if we take the uh, governance, we look at the FWAT assessment. Uh, if we take security, we look at police population ratio. And then for sanitation, uh, we look at uh, open defecation free. For the first two years on sanitation, uh, we were basically looking at uh, complete uh, certification of the entire district. However, since, since last year, the department has been, uh, Department of Sanitation, Health and Sanitation has been doing well to look at communities uh, that within the district that are ODF. Uh, I see. How, how difficult so was it for you, Doctor? How difficult was it for you gathering all this data from these areas that you 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 considered 
in the process of, of, of gathering some facts for this? Well, first of all, just note that this is administrative data. This is data that the government of Ghana, MMDs, routinely collect. Uh, this is data that they collect from the local level. They are submitted from the district assemblies to Accra. They are verified, they are certified, and they are given out as, as data that the government of Ghana uses. Right. Uh, for the state sectors that we collect data from MMDs, um, I must say that data accessibility has been difficult uh, in, in this country. We don't collect and store data properly. Indeed, I will add that we probably don't even understand or, 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 or see the need of why data is being collected for. And that is why, even though people have recommended that we expand the index uh, in terms of sectors, we can only collect this data from these six sectors because these are data that are regular, that are stable, and we can, conf we can confidently right. uh, be assured that we can always get this data. But I will say that when we started, it was very much difficult. Right. But today, it's much improved. improved. There's progress in terms of data, accessibility of these data from these six sectors. But I will also add that we still have a lot to do in this country in terms of uh, data collection and, and storage and accessibility. Doc, thank you for your time this evening. I'm grateful. Dr. Franklin Odro is Deputy Director of the Center for Democratic Development. They partnered UNICEF to put this uh, district league table together with Tema topping with 80 out of 100, the highest score ever in this league table. News 360 Skype interview is brought to you by MTN, everywhere you go. Well, let's turn to other stories this evening. As the health minister, Kweku Ajamain Menu, says government will only take action on the report of the central medical stores fire if the forensic audit yet to be conducted by the Auditor General is completed. Kweku Ajamain Menu said the outcome will set the tone for the ministry to deal with any culprit in the incident. At least 12 officials of the Ghana Health Service were interdicted in connection with the fire at the Tema Central Medical Stores last two years, but no one has been prosecuted. But the health minister addressing the Meet the Press series in Accra said government can only act if the forensic audit Correct. yet to be conducted by the Auditor General is completed. He added, his ministry is treading cautiously not to allow any corporate to escape. If a report says that there should be a forensic audit and that audit has not been done, how do you take anybody to go to anywhere to prosecute? The person will go scot-free. Technically, you cannot go to court. I think we have to do forensic audit. So allow me to go through procurement processes to select the consultant who will do the work. And I think at the stage now, he has actually um, done his procurement quite well. He's just about signing of a contract award, and then the consultant that has been selected will start doing the work. The ministry is seeking funds to settle the 2016 debt for consumables for psychiatric hospitals. It is expected if monies are not paid by December this year, there would be a looming shortage, and this is what the minister is worried about. He added the ministry has suspended work on the construction of the seven district hospitals to undertake auditing. Uh, still on the health minister, he's described the impasse at the Anchor for Psychiatric Hospital as a case of personality clash. Kwekwaji Mameno said government has invited the leadership of the nurses and will ensure an amicable resolution. His comment comes after staff of the psychiatric hospital abandoned inmates at the facility Thursday in a sit-down strike. The staff have accused the medical director of corruption and having poor human relations and managerial skills. An ultimatum was given by their grief staff that they rejected an apology from their bosses expired last night. But speaking on the issue, during the Meet the Press series in Accra Thursday, the Minister of Health, Kweku Ajiman Menu, said the leadership of the nurses have been invited for a meeting over the misunderstanding between them and the medical director. 
As of yesterday, I gave instructions that they should invite the aggrieved nurses, their representation, to come to meet with me in the ministry, and we will engage and dialogue. I believe where they are by today, they may have taken, apart from the phone calls, they may have received a letter signed, and we are expecting them to come to a ministry on Tuesday morning. I believe we can resolve these matters. It is not a matter of service condition issue. It's a matter of personality clash with the chief executive of the place. And um, some disciplinary issues are involved. I don't want us to open our detailedness in public. We will meet with them, and I believe we can resolve the matter. He assured the nurses not to abandon their post and leave the patients to their faith. The minister added further investigations would be conducted. Now, still on this, Dr. Eugene Dodoy has issued an apology letter and also responded to some allegations of maladministration and show of gross disrespect to subordinates made against him by the staff at the Ankerfield Psychiatric Hospital. In a four-page apology letter, Dr. Dodoy indicated that the upheaval started after an orientation scheduled for newly recruited staff was perceived as punishment for nurses in particular. He noted nurses are not happy about the new systems to improve quality mental health care such as weekly prescribers meeting, amongst others. He explained he observed increasing frequency of nurses, particularly attending regular school at nearby University of Cape Coast while also working full time for the hospital. He apologized unreservedly to all staff of the Anchor Full Psychiatric Hospital who have been hurt by his approach. The CEO of the Mental Health Authority, Central Regional Minister, and all other persons affected. That's what the letter stated. Well, Dr. Eugene Dodoy has apologized, at least issued an apology letter, but in a related development, the staff of Ankerfort Psychiatric Hospital have rejected this apology by the medical director of the hospital, Dr. Eugene Dodoy. According to them, this is not the first time Dr. Dodoy has apologized. A situation, they say, gives them reason to question the genuineness of the apology rendered a leader of the aggrieved anchor for staff that's malcolm ali spoke in an earlier telephone interview this apology no we will not accept this apology and this is not the first time he's um, apologizing he made an attempt to apologize when we met the regional minister on the 10th of november um 2017 um there was also an attempt to apologize um, when the committee brought the report on the 17th of november um, 2017 we are not accepting any apology. Why do you... It, it's very funny. Mental health authority is machinating all these gimmicks. I mean, how do we accuse somebody, of, I mean, for human rights violation, conflict of interest and corruption, and you're saying that the person is to come and apologize? Where on this earth? We haven't seen it before. The person is breaking us psychologically. We are breaking down. We are emotionally traumatized. We cannot work. We don't have sound mind to work with. If they really wanted an, an apology, and I'm, I'm telling mental health authority, if they really want this man to apologize, they would have done it long, 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 long time ago. We'll certainly stay on this development at the Anchor Full Psychiatric Hospital and bring you more on it subsequently. But in other stories, the Bonu Ahafo region is likely to be divided into three if petitioners are able to make a strong case. Two petitioners are seeking for the creation of Bonu East and Ahafo regions, in addition to the current Bonu Ahafo region. The Ahafo region is currently made up of the Bunos and the Ahafos. Chiefs and people of Sankori, Mem, Bechem, Kenyasi, Fidium, Gosso, Akrodie, Jayan Kwanta and others within the current Ahafo area are making strong demands for a proposed Ahafo region. The creation of the region is long overdue. And the president even said it when he became there. So, it's long overdue. We want a separate region. A separate region should be carved out of the wrong half of region for half of people. Appearing before the Commission of Inquiry looking into the creation of new regions, representatives of the Ahafo Development Association argued the separation would engender development which has eluded them for years. 
development, that is all, schools, universities, hospitals, roads, and then uh, uh, good drinking water. We are not getting them in our area, in the Afro area. That is why we want a separate region. They would, however, have to convince the commission to see this happen. That means the Borongafu now may have three regions. The current Borongafu Borong region, then Borong East region, and the Ahafu region, if cases are made for their creation. The other petition is proposing the creation of a Buno East region will also appear before the Commission on Tuesday, November 28, to defend their argument. And now Ghana and Denmark have resolved to strengthen ties in the areas of trade and investment, receiving the Queen of Denmark at the Flagstaff House in Accra. President Ekofwada pledged to work towards improving relations to create increased business opportunities. Ghana and Denmark have enjoyed strong commercial ties over the years and the visit of the Queen is expected to further deepen the already existing relations. That is really where we are now. We want as much as possible to develop good trade and investment relations with our partners. That's increasingly the focus of Ghanaian policy, is to accentuate the economic partnership, the businessmen getting together, investing in our country, and those who can also investing in Denmark. Why not? Your presence here focuses attention, yes, on both our side and on your side as to what the possibilities are, what can happen in Ghana. And I am particularly appreciative. I believe it's the first time ever in the history of our country that a Danish monarch. The visit will also be used to mark Ghana's gradual transition from aid to trade. The pathologist who conducted the autopsy on the body of murdered military officer Major Max Omahama has submitted his reports to the court. The report, which is yet to be made public, was filed at the district court registry. This was after the presiding judge summoned the pathologist to inquire why the full report had delayed for more than four months. The pathologist, Dr. Lawrence Edusa, blamed the police for the delay, adding the police have not cooperated with him as certain demands of his have not been met. The judge who confirmed receipt of the full report, however, ordered the registrar to make a copy available to prosecution for the prosecutor to make same available to the Attorney General. The prosecutor, DSP George Amega, told the court the filing of the report will now pave way for the committal processes of the suspect to continue as it stalled due to the delay. A total of 22 people are standing trial for the lynching and killing of the soldier, Major Maxwell Mahama at Denchabwasi in the central region. The case has been adjourned to December 12. Good evening and thanks for staying with us on News 360. Let's do business now. I am Nanekia Mensah Brampa. Now, business owners and online shops globally adapt to reduction sales strategy to empty stock and make room for new arrivals. Now, a global sale that is gradually catching up here in Ghana is Black Friday. What exactly is this day about? Uh, well, the business desk finds out. Black Friday is one of the biggest shopping events of the year, mostly in Europe. Even though not all brands take part, most household names participate. And while some shoppers head to the stores in person, many prefer to browse deals online in the comfort of their home or office. This is a display of uh, Black Friday happening in the United Kingdom, where we have shops, top 10 shops in the UK showing off uh, exactly what they would have in store when it comes to buying or sales in the United Kingdom. You can get as low as 40% discount and as high as an 80% discount. Globally, this is happening. But gradually, it is catching up here in Ghana, talking about discount, discount sales in shops as well as online. How can Ghanaian businesses also take advantage or adapt discount sale being a big thing. 
Black Friday is an unofficial holiday that started in the United States evolving from 1952. Mostly a day before Thanksgiving, Black Friday is regarded as the beginning of Christmas shopping in the U.S., where almost all stores give out attractive discounts for flagship products. It is reported that people queued at most retail shops early before shops were opened just to be the first to grab the amazing stuff. The presence of overcrowding in these shops led to many injured, with some others losing their lives, hence the term black. In Africa and in Ghana, this council has become common. Obviously, when you come to some shops, it's not a Black Friday, but it is a discount sale. We are here at the Osu Oxford Street Mall, where we saw a display of a 50% discount sale in one of the shops. And uh, we are here with a supervisor to find out exactly what difference it makes when you're having a sale compared to when it's a normal sale for the day. So we have twice the numbers tripping in, or three times the numbers tripping in to buy more. And because uh, it's a discount sale, of course, everybody will want to have a feel of um, whatever we are discounting. Aside businesses making profits, some individuals do appreciate discount sales. Uh, I know in the States, usually people wait for Black Friday to purchase things. And usually that's how a lot of uh, stores get their revenue or, or the inventory out. And so by doing that, they're, they're going to drive people into, the, uh, into their practices, into their business and stuff like that. So. I think it's a good idea. They want to get certain things, but then the prices, because of the prices, they are not able to do it. So with the discount sales, I'm sure some people are going to be very much interested in it. Well, others are yet to come to terms with a catchphrase. Do you have any idea of what Black Friday is? Um, I, what I know is that's the day for blacks. It's a day put aside for to celebrate black people, especially um, people like uh, Martin Luther, uh, uh, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, and then the rest. Most people really do have a fair idea when we talk about Black Friday, and obviously, others are still in the shadows when it comes to knowing what exactly Black Friday is all about. But it's quite obvious most shops have already started slashing prices on their goods looking ahead of the festive season, and I'm sure most Ghanaian businesses would want to take advantage of slashing in prices, talking about discount sales and Black Friday ahead of the festive season. Let's see prices reduce so that we get rid of the old stock. Coming to you from the Osu Oxford Street Mall, I am Nanekia Mensa Brampa, TV3. Well, I don't know how it will turn out here in Ghana, considering the time of the month. It's getting closer to the end of the month, and I'm sure at this season, lots of people don't have cash. But we'll see how it goes in Europe as well as Ghana here online when it happens. Let's move on to look at some more issues tonight. And Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Baunia has lauded a Danish company for investing $1.8 billion to the ongoing port expansion. Speaking at a business forum with some Danish delegation, Dr. Balmier assured of ruling more flexible policies from next year to improve on the business climate. Dr. Mohamed Balmier emphasized government's decision for more innovative and integrated policies in 2018. He again assured of mobilizing domestic resources and funds to tighten macroeconomic stability. From next year, the vice president stated, government will focus its attention on trade and investment. If you are looking for systemic or systematic private sector investment, you need a more formalized economic system. And this is why we are back and back on a digitalization of the Ghanaian economy. There's a digital transformation going on as we speak. Dr. Baumia lauded efforts to the Danish government for contributing to Ghana's development, especially with the ongoing port expansion. The single largest private sector investment in Ghana in 2017, uh, the GIPC was just telling me, was from Denmark. This is an investment in MPS of $1.8 billion for port expansion. This is very, very significant, and this is much more than government we're spending on domestic capital this year. 
Minister of Environment and Food for Denmark, spoke about collaborating with Ghana to improve on agriculture and food security. In Denmark, we have worked hard to attain a strong global brand within our food sector. And today, Danish food production is among the safest, most productive and most climate efficient food sectors in the world. Minister of Trade and Industry, Alan Kujo Chermatin, emphasized on government flagship programs and more stimulus packages for businesses. If you are a Danish investor and you take a strategic decision after this visit to locate in Ghana, it means you can export duty-free, quota-free to the whole of Africa, right here from, from, from Ghana. President of the Association of Ghana Industries, Dr. Yawidu Jemfi, implored government to put in place flexible policies to improve the lot of private businesses. Building our economy, the private sector records that the only robust relationship with the government and constructive framework of mutual cooperation between the private and the public can really move forward when we are able to see the new vision of this great government that we have. Later, the vice president officially opened an exhibition between the Danish delegation and Ghanaian businesses. The exhibition is to allow both parties to share best practices and propose sustainable financing arrangements for companies. Accra Brewery Limited has provided a solar-powered irrigation system for rice farmers at Gambibgo in the Bolgatanga municipality. Now, the 80,000 cities farrow irrigation system is intended to benefit about 10,000 rice farmers and over 35,000 residents. Rabi Utanko has this one. Poor rainfall pattern in the northern part of Ghana affects farming activities and food production. Rice farmers in the Upper East region have resorted to dry season farming with limited water sources as most dams have dried up while others need to be desilted. Due to the lack of irrigation facilities in the region, rice farms wilt with huge investments wasted. Accra Brewery Limited, as part of its corporate social responsibility, has installed a solar-powered mechanized borehole with irrigation facilities in the Gambigo community in the Bolgatanga municipality to help rice farmers actively carry out dry season farming. Brand manager of Accra Brewery Limited, John Baptist Akado, stressed that sustainable development is key to the company. Well, we decided to lessen the burden of smallholder farmers in communities with very, very long uh, dry seasons, sometimes dry seasons spanning between seven to eight months, which brings a lot of hardships to the communities and the farmers. So we decided to give them this project, which is made up of a mechanized borehole and irrigation system, which is powered by solar energy. And for this facility or this project, it is our commitment and our promise to these farmers that we care about them and we are so much concerned about their livelihood. He pointed out that with the introduction of the Eagle Larger Cassava Beer, a significant number of direct and indirect jobs for cassava have been created, adding Accra Brewery is committed to giving back to communities in which they operate. The Upper East Regional Minister, Roxin Ayini Bukhari, said the initiative by Accra Brewery is in line with government's One Village, One Dam policy, which is intended to improve irrigation in the three regions of the north. Irrigation and potable water provisions are surely the topmost concerns of farmers in this part of the country called Ghana. That experiences only three months of rain in three in a year. The availability of water all year will now mean that communities can farm more and hence make savings. It also means that our youth will stay at home and work instead of migrating to the south of Ghana during the dry season. All right, so there's more news on our website. It's 3news.com. My name is Nanikia Mensah Brampa. We we'll return shortly with the latest in sports with Nanaku Jafre. Good evening.
Welcome back to News 360. On the international front this evening, the International Monetary Fund, IMF, is warning Zimbabwe about the current state of its economy. They want the country to consider immediately seeking support from the IMF to resuscitate their economy. The International Monetary Fund has warned Zimbabwe must act quickly to dig its economy out of the hole and assess international financial aid as it argues the government's spending and foreign debt are too high and it needs structural reform. Zimbabwe Mission Chief Gen Leon gave the warning in Harare. The country's incoming leader, Emerson Mwangwaga, has pledged to grow the economy and provide jobs. The once thriving economy is now seen as a regional basket case. Mr. Leon noted the economic situation in Zimbabwe remains very difficult. Let's go over some entertainment news. Entertainment News is brought to you by... Entertainment this evening, TV3's entertainment journalist, Concept Warai, has been nominated in the journalism category of the 2017 People's Celebrity Awards. The man known in real life as Owusu Joseph Warai, his nomination comes on the heels of his series of impactful stories on neglected veteran entertainers. Presenters Johnny Hughes and Christian J. Frimpong were also nominated for the 2017 People's Celebrity Awards. The People's Celebrity Awards honor and celebrate individuals who have excelled in their various fields towards the development of the Ghanaian arts and entertainment industry. Nominees for the 2017 edition were unveiled on November 21. The nominees are Concept Warai. TV3's entertainment journalist Concept Warai made the shortlist for the Journalist of the Year category. He earned the slot thanks to his series of impactful reports on the plight of aging and ailing Ghanaian entertainment personalities. His result-oriented stories attracted the attention of some industry interest groups who reached out to their members. This is where Super OD, legendary actor Super OD, is currently residing after so many decades, about five decades, of entertaining Ghanaians. He visited ailing Super OD and his Suedro home. At age 82, the comedy legend's knees have grown weaker, making it difficult to walk. Through his report, MP for the area, Queen Star Sawyer, reached out to the veteran actor and comedian. I've been able to bring the electric wheelchair, which is really, I'm sure, will put smiles on his face at least for the rest of his life. I'm grateful to TV. <laughs> <laughs> the Ghana Actors Guild did same. Many other individuals went to Super OD's aid, with the last being a visit and donation by former president John Dramani Mahama. He lives on the third floor of this flat. Now, the building. It's not disability friendly and so it's a Herculean tax moving him from the top to the ground floor. His constant update on the plight of the composer of NDC's party anthem, Jewel Acker, also produced results. Following that particular story, one doctor has offered to treat him for free. There is a new apartment that his children have got him for him just to make sure that he doesn't go through all the stress. I'm doing well bit by bit because I've left the upstairs and I come downstairs. So, as you know, the doctor, he did well by giving me good medicine and all this stuff. And that now I'm becoming okay. I, I can walk now, but not too much. But bit by bit, God will put me in the right way. But how do you find this environment? <laughs> it's very nice. You haven't gone through all the goddamn thing. If you go through, you see that it's very nice. TV3 is the place that you watch good news, yeah. entertainment, everything that you want to get in there. 
TV3, you get it. We are very happy for this one. And, uh, it all started when we decided to go back to our veterans and find out how they are doing and get Ghanaians to start thinking about our veterans and then it paid off. So yes, this is a tap on the back and we appreciate it. It's only going to edge us on. Media General's affable presenter Johnny Hughes was also nominated in the male TV presenter category. This is an endorsement one more time of what work we are doing and how far um, we, have, we have gone with what we do, how many lives we touched, how many dreams we have uh, accomplished. I think those are the things that caught the attention of uh, the board. We're going to see how it goes. Presenter of Eniji Emre, an entertainment show on Onya FM, Christian Ej Frimpong, was also nominated for the male radio presenter of the year. Dial star 712 star 8 hash send and follow instructions to vote Concept or I, Johnny Hughes and Christian Ej Frimpong. Oh well, I wish him the very best. It's so amazing to see Concept or I, Usu or I. Yeah, he's called, yes, he called Joseph Usu or Yes, he is called Joseph. He keeps that in yeah. hiding, but he is called Joseph. Amazing stuff. Well, every one of them in there deserves Absolutely. Yes. the support yes, of true. everybody out there. So yes. please, let's make it happen yes. again. Let's make it happen again. On behalf of the rest of the team, we're grateful. You spent your 60 minutes with us here on News 360. My name is Alfred Okonsi. And I'm Natalie Ford. Thanks so much for watching. We've got more news on our website. That's 3news.com. And news at 10 all simulcast on our sister station, 3FM 92.7. Have an incredible evening.